can you expect then as a cattle learner? Well, number one, you should expect to train your brain. And uh, Mike Rother likes to remind people that the two kata together are a methodology for developing people to meet tough challenges by teaching scientific thinking patterns. What else can you expect? Well, you can expect a daily routine. The learner and the coach meet every day at a storyboard. And the learner learns about the process they are studying and considers their next step and what obstacles are in their way. The coach pays attention to the learner and how well they are learning the improvement kata, how well they're following those steps. So you can see that it's a, it's a, a it's a group activity, a team, it's a team sport. The other thing you can expect is you can expect to identify and study a focus process. So you are experimenting, as I said, towards that next target condition if you are the learner. And more than that, you can expect to focus on learning. Your coach is going to ask you all the time, what have you learned? And our aim partly there is to become more reflective, to pay attention to how we're thinking and what we're learning. And this paying attention to what, what we expected to happen and what actually happened is the core dynamic of scientific thinking. If, um, if you take a step and you get exactly what you predicted, you have a data point on your run chart. But if you take a step and something happens that is a surprise, well, then you have an opportunity for learning. So it is that gap, oh dear, what was that, between what you wanted, expected, and what happened that offers you that opportunity for scientific thinking. And uh, the other thing I would say, just to remember that we're not, the, if Mike likes to say it's not the questions or the, themselves that are important but the skills and the mindset that they leave behind. And so you literally are retraining your brain and developing uh, an extra channel of thinking or a way of a mindset. Okay, so you're a new cattle learner. It's a great big world with many, many deserts to cross and mountains to climb. What more could you expect to learn and unlearn as a new cattle learner? Well, you're going to unlearn, and this is really super useful. You're going to unlearn jumping to conclusions. You're going to unlearn jumping to solutions. And you probably won't find yourself anymore in conversations where you just say, how about this? I think it's that. With the kata, we don't, um, we don't guess. We get data. Well, you can expect to be given or choose yourself a challenge. Right? Where do you want to be in three months in 2022? Where do you want to be maybe in two years? So having the challenge or direction is a really uh, important part of becoming a learner. You could expect maybe to learn how to analyze a process. This is actually the five steps of the improvement cat analysis. This is the cat there from Mike. But um, learning this for some people is not natural. So you're going to spend some time learning how to anal identify and analyze and describe and document a process. Also, you're going to learn to see processes everywhere and you're going to learn to think about conditions. So this is uh, a little description of the target condition. So we don't think about just what number do you want, right? What production number or what what weight, for example, if you're losing weight, what weight do you want? But how do you want that process to run? So it's the way we play the game, not just the score at the end. A lot of people are used to talking about the score at the end, not the way you play the game. Uh, but what we know about challenges that are described only as outcome metrics or as, as target scores is that lots and lots of people are creative about how to cheat their way around that kind of number. People will find a way. You can also expect as a new learner to start thinking about obstacles. So I described already for the idea of current condition, where am I now? Target condition, where do I want to be? Um, and then we talk about what's in the way. And I think obstacle thinking 
is one of the most important uh, gifts from learning the kata or, or sort of side left behind things. Because uh, until I learned about obstacles, I used to, you know, always think, well, first of all, we've got problems, we've got issues, right? <laughs> but no, maybe we just have obstacles. And the great thing about an obstacle, so this is a traffic jam obstacle, but the great thing about an obstacle is it offers you the opportunity to learn about it, discover the cause, and then take actions to either eliminate the cause or um, come up with um, a way that the process doesn't need to go down that route and run into that obstacle. The other great thing about obstacles is that the question is, um, what obstacles do you think are currently in the way of reaching the target condition? And you learn that a lot of the things in your way and your emotional reaction to them are in your own thinking. They're may maybe not in the data. So I think um, obstacle thinking, if I was a new learner and you said to me, what's the coolest part or what has been the, a great takeaway, not only in uh, work related things, but in all parts of your life, I think obstacle thinking has been a really great part of learning the kata. I put this woman up with a shushing motion because I think it's really important that you learn, unlearn keeping quiet and you learn to honestly share your thinking. So the cat, you can't be an uh, improver and do the improvement kata if you are holding back what you think uh, because you're wondering what your coach or your boss or your brother or your friend or whoever's coaching you um, wants you to say. You have to be brave. You have to have trust enough and you have to be safe enough that you unlearn any tendency you have to keep your opinion to yourself. 